creative people from comics, film, TV, music, and video game industries. And I'm your host, Rachel Rock. We are on episode 352, talking with the awesome Brian Crowley, creator of the Comic Hamster Age. How are you today, Brian? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm excellent. So we're here talking about your comic Hamster Age. So what exactly is Hamster Age, and when did it begin? Uh, I started Hamster Age in 2010. Uh, I, I launched it uh, around the time of the first C2E2. Um, and uh, Hamster Age is about a superheroine who, named Mega Babe who uh, has a childhood pet hamster that comes back and uh, into the present and has similar power sets as hers and um, causes all kinds of trouble for her. And so she's kind of dealing with that and how to deal with him. And right now... Um, we're at the point in the comic where she had told him to, to stay still and to stay set and not cause any trouble, and another, uh, a, a big monster kind of guy started causing trouble in the city, and Roosevelt's now in the middle of, of a battle with him. And that's where we're at presently. I'm excited to see what that episode has. So yeah. what genre would you consider Hamster Age to be? I would definitely say it's in the quirky superhero, funny superhero type of, type of genre. I, I would say that. That's that's kind of where it is. And who's your target audience? Um, I you know, I think I as I, I think I said last time, um the um my wife and I talk with a lot of women uh in their thirties to forties who seem to really take to the character and really like the character. Um and as well as uh uh but there are a lot of different younger teens and, and young men and, and women and, and all kinds of different Age, age categories, and kids that uh, also seem to really like it and take to it pretty well. So why do you think it applies to these demographics, like these certain types of people? I think, I think that, I, well, I think that the, um, the childlike nature of the main character um, is, is cute, and I think that kids relate to that. They relate to kind of uh, not knowing their surroundings and not, um, not really... Uh, uh, um, causing trouble and not maybe intending to cause trouble. I yeah. think that's a pretty common kid experience. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's why. So I saw online that um, on your blog that Roosevelt was initially supposed to be two characters, so why did you combine him into being one? Yeah, um, so I had had this, um, small, um, this, this small kind of hamster cartoony character that I used to draw when I was a kid. Um, and, and then I had the, this you know this big tiger character, Tigeron, that I still that I still will use eventually in Hamster Rage, um, and I think that young young men and women when they're when they're younger, I think when you're creating things and you're trying to project um, things in, uh, things out from yourself, you try to make them very badass and very um, just the best and amazing at everything. And I think as I got older, I realized that that was actually not very interesting. Yeah, uh, and it was much more interesting to have the flaws and the damage and kind of the emotional vulnerability. And so, going back to like that childlike, smaller character and combining those two uh, made sense. It gave vulnerability to, to to the bigger, tougher kind of character, which I think is much more interesting. And I'm sure so many more people can relate to that as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and it gives it an awkwardness to to them as well. Which so. everybody experiences. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you always been an artist? Because I read also on your blog that you didn't color the comics initially because you felt that it was awful, and now you're yeah. starting to add color. Well, um, so what happened was was I I did the first two initially. I did the first two colors of the comics, and I was like, I'm slow, and I'm not very good at this. Um, and then Rochelle Rosenberg, who colors for Marvel, she colored it. And so th there was a guy named Mark Lewis who also did some colors um, for it. And that, that did pretty well. And then for a little bit, I colored it again. Uh, and it was okay. Um, and then recently, uh, my friend Randy Field and I started talking, and, and um, he's been doing the colors. And he's been doing a fantastic job with them. That looks awesome. Yeah, I, I'm just too slow. And quite frankly, he's a much better colorist than I am. I am not a I'm not a very good colorist, and I think that that I think that that's um, partly because uh, that's partly the, just time dedication on my part. I'd I'd rather be doing the writing and the and the drawing, and and I think you know comics is inherently a team activity. Mm -hmm. and well, you have some, some amazing ideas, so 
Yeah, thank you very much. You can't win everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so I noticed there's some songs um, in some of the comics. There's In a Big Country. Yeah. One of yeah. the songs that he sings, and you said that it brings a smile to your face. So do you bring certain aspects of your life and apply them to your comics? Yeah, I mean, I actually, the, the fight scene that I have going on right now, I originally wanted to put in a modern pop song into it. But I just realized that I, I was like, oh, that doesn't quite work. I originally had this idea of them going into a dance club, like them crashing into a dance club type thing, and people like be would be dancing around as they were fighting in the middle of it, and like some modern pop song would be playing, like some Katy Perry song or something like yeah. that. And uh, then I decided, no, because uh, I just kind of changed it around. But I definitely I love music, and I want to try to bring that in as much as possible. I don't know how successful I was uh, oh, in the beginning. <laughs> oh, it was? It worked? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, uh, I, but I, I definitely will probably do that more, because I, I like doing that. That's a fun thing to do. So do you um, keep uh, your viewers' thoughts in mind while you're doing the comics, or do you just come up with your ideas and just hope that it'll apply to someone out there? I, I try to think about what I wanna what I wanna read and what I would find interesting, and then just and think that I think I've got tastes that are pretty similar to to what other people like, and I just try to uh, map it off of that. Um, but I don't. But I try to also then I, I also realize that like um, the stuff that I respond to most is stuff that has um, uh, a a commercial sensibility that's mixed with an artistic integrity. Yeah, um, and so I try to make sure that I, I maintain both of those um, with it. So you definitely do. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. There are various characters throughout the comic. Um, I noticed as Halloween Man. Uh, yeah. Are those friends of yours that are doing other comics? Because I know that Halloween Man also is another comic. Yeah, that's my friend Drew Edwards, who's uh, been a, a, a friend for a long time. Who um, who uh, when I was doing it, I was like I. I I asked him, I was like, hey, do you mind if I borrow him? And I, I borrowed Honor Brigade from Tom Stilwell, and I had to, I had, had to, had to, had to borrow um, Love Bunny and Mr. Hell from Tim yeah. Seeley. Because I, I have bugged him forever about, I love that character, I love those characters. Yeah. I think tonally, they, tonally, they match exactly uh, what, I, what I kind of uh, want, have been wanting to do. Um, so I was like, yeah, that just matches perfectly. Um, so I just I just like doing that. I just I, I and I, and I always I always want like my character has appeared over on Pi Jane like as a Halloween mask, and I always like I always want to share and play with other people's toys and have them play with my toys. I, I like. Has Roosevelt uh, appeared in other any other comics other than the one you just mentioned? Uh, he appeared in Pi Jane. Um, he appeared. Uh, I drew him into. Um, uh, I did a little short story for Hoax Hunters. Uh, okay. Like a little small, and I drew him as a stuffed toy into into uh, uh, into it like a mom holding a stuffed toy of him. Mm -hmm. So he's appeared in that way. Uh, I don't. Uh, there's one or two other people that I know uh, drew him into some other minor thing, but I, I'm not remembering it off the top of my head. So, so do you like? Do you, are these friends of yours, or have you met them at conventions in the past and you've just discussed ideas? Um, well, t uh, Tony Maldonado, who uh, does P.I. Jane, is a friend of mine. So he okay. and he's drawn. He actually did this uh, a couple years, like two or three years ago. Did this killer drawing of Roosevelt and Lobstar and Mega Babe, and I was just like, oh my god, these are great. Like I was like, these are better. Than, this is way better. I wish I was as good a cartoonist as he is. He <laughs> did a, he did a, just did a great job on it on them. Yeah. Um, it, and, it collaborates all the fan bases as well, being able to have the other characters involved within the stories. Oh yeah, absolutely, and it's and it's so much fun. I like I said, I, I have, I, I love, I love, um, I love being able to play with other people's characters, and I'm, I love anybody who were to ask me, you know, um, if they wanted to borrow Roosevelt, I'd be like, yeah, sure, just don't have them. Just my rules would be just don't have them. Do anything rated R, you know, and don't have them murder anybody or anything exactly. like that. You know, that's it. So, you know. So what rating, speaking of which, do you think applies for to your comics? Like, who do you think it's acceptable for? Uh, I think I, I try to say that it's all ages, but I would say probably, like, if I were to give it, like, a, a firm, um, a firm, like, 
movie style rating. I would say it's a PG, PG thirteen type of type of rating. I I, um, I think it's more. I mean, I, I my sensibility tends to be more G, but I I know that there are some people that just uh, a, a woman character having cleavage makes yeah. it PG thirteen or whatever, which is very weird. Yeah. But, exactly. um, but uh, but so 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 you know I, I think the general sensibility would be PG thirteen. Is Roosevelt aware of his size and his monstrous like abilities? Because it seems within some of the um, comics that he he is not aware of his monster like abilities, and so I don't know if for future plans if there's anything planned to make him more aware of him being not socially acceptable. Yeah. Um, well, definitely, right, what's happening right now with him fighting uh, Lobstar, that's definitely going to be something that happens. Like, initially, he's not, he's not aware at all. He's very much, very childlike and very, has no sense of himself or his surroundings or what effect he's having on people. Um, but uh, as he gets in, but uh, as he and Lobstar are fighting, Lobstar refers to him as a monster, refers to himself as a monster, and refers to Roosevelt as a monster. And I think that kind of turns the flips the uh, the light bulb on in his head, where he goes, "Oh, wait a second, this is you know," and uh, and we'll we'll see what happens as a result of that. So, um, do you think him realizing this will make him be a little bit different, or be a different character, or do you not know yet? Uh, it will definitely it definitely uh, changes him, and and probably in a way that a lot of people are not going to. To expect, and that kind of goes back to the vulnerability thing. Yeah. Of 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 uh, you know, um, I think that a, a lot of I think your typical comic character um, being told that they're a monster, their reaction would be to go one way or the other with it. Exactly. I think, you know, they would be let go with it or they'd go against it. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt's going to take that third option, and I'll and uh, and you guys will see what that is. Well, I'm very excited for your future plans for this and to see what happens with him. Yeah. Thank you very much for taking the time to interview with me today. Absolutely. I'm happy to do it. And for people that are going to be reading this comic, just an FYI, hamster is not spelt with a P, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> that Thank happens, you very much. <laughs> that happens so often. That, oh, my goodness. All the time, people... people do that. So yeah, it's, it's so keep fun. that in mind. It's hamster rage without a P. I'm I'm gonna make a T-shirt that says that hamster. There's no P in hamster. I think that that needs to happen. You definitely so. need to do that. <laughs> Confused me. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks.